Hello HRNers! In this video, we are going to show you some amazing chess studies. First one is played by Kasparian in 1959. Let's see how he won. First move, and the only move which is winning, is Queen H1. Because after playing C6, Black can take with King, after queen a6, bishop b6, and it's simply a draw. So try to avoid this trap and play queen h1. Black played king b8, but it's also not helping to play king a6 because we can play queen f1 and we are trying to make double attack on king and on rook. King b7, queen f3, king b8. We are slowly getting our queen near to rook and we are threatening to give check to queen f8, king b7. Now it's the right time for c6. And after king c6, queen e8. And we achieved what we want. So king b8, queen h8, king b7, again c6. This is similar like uh, the position before. If he takes with king, we can play queen e8. If he plays king b6, for example, we can play queen d4 and we are threatening to attack rook and king in the next move. So that's not an option. So he took with rook. But what happens now? Now comes fun. Queen h1, king b6, queen g1, king b7, because after king a6, we can give check and come to the similar position. So let's look the main line. King b7, queen g2, king b6, queen f2, and slowly going one step at a time, queen e3, king b7, queen e4, so this is how we are going to win the game. king b6, queen d4, king b7, and finally queen d5. And black resigned the game. He can't move his king because of checkmate. He can't actually move his rook. He doesn't have a move. And we are also threatening to play king d5. So this was the right time for black to resign the game. But very interesting what queen needed to go through to win the game. I can also get you a illustration how this happened. So queen g2 here. Very interesting. So let's move to the second one. This one is made by Gurvich in 1959. Here, white is winning. But how? Also, it is important not to blunder after moves like rook a8, because after b3, king b7, king b4, white can't win anymore. That's why it is very important to play bishop g8. This is the winning move. Of course, it's preventing b3. Black plays rook b2. If he takes on a4, it is checkmate on h5. But nobody wants to get checkmated. So, rook b2. Here comes the interesting move. Bishop b3. 
and it is winning the game. If white plays bishop c4, he plunders after b3, bishop b5, and rook g2. So now please. Bishop b3. Rook takes b3. Rook a8. And there is no escape from it. Black took on a4, but it is easy to see that there is no other good option. So king takes a4 and king b6 checkmate. Let's move to the third one and see if it is also interesting like those two. And here we are at Koronikov's chess study, made in 1950. White is also winning the game. In this video, all games are winning for white. If you want, you can check the last video where all three games were a draw. But here white is winning. And the only move to win the game is bishop b6. Point is that after king h7, we play bishop e3 and there is no more h6 square for black's king, so it is actually blocked, and we are going to take this weak knight on h1. But black has some counter chances, and those are to sacrifice a pawn. But king f6, d4, bishop takes d4, king h6, but it's hopeless for black. We are on time. King f5, king h5, king f4, king h4, king f3, king e3, and the important move, not to blunder in the end where we already did everything, is bishop e5. Because if we play bishop h1, black can make a draw. It's unbelievable, but it's true. Can you guess which move should he play? Knight g3. And after pawn takes g3, it's stalemate. So do not blunder this stalemate. Bishop e5. And now black doesn't have any option because after knight g3, we are taking with pawn. And black has a square for his king, and we are simply winning. So that's how you do it in this example. We hope you liked those studies. If you did, then subscribe to our channel so you don't miss next week's one. See you soon.